Hello YouTube friends. I've had some people ask how I use Digital Juice. They've seen that I, the fact that I use Digital Juice music on a lot of my videos. And so I thought, thought I'd just show you. For those of you who don't know about Digital Juice, it's a subscription company that has all kinds of royalty free video and, um, and audio elements. And so I've been using Digital Juice for probably, gee whiz, nearly 10 years now, I'd guess. And it used to be you had to go buy all their stuff on DVDs. Now it's all a subscription type thing. And so here is my Digital Juice subscription, which I'm a lifetime member. It costs about $500 to be a member. But folks, they have probably 20,000 things out here. It's unreal. I've logged in, you can see them up here under Tony Glenn. And you go to store and then you start to realize just what all the crazy stuff you got. You got, now see, I don't use so much of this on my on my YouTube channel, I just use the audio mostly. I don't use a whole lot of their lower thirds. However, my professional work, I'm constantly going and getting graphic elements, lower thirds, uh, bits of stock video, overlays, backgrounds. It just It's just an incredible bunch of stuff. I mean, if I just kind of segue through it here, you'll see all the various stuff. So you, you pay like $500 one time and you have access to all of it for per in perpetuity, I guess. In other words, I mean, it's just a ton of stuff. I'm not gonna try to sell you any more on it. I will, since the person asks how I use music, I'll let you see how I do that. You have specialty stores, you have music and sound effects. Typically, uh, and you see down here in the bottom where I've been downloading some of these for this very video, so I'll let you, uh, we will go look at one of these, but I'll give you an example of what happens. You go to music, sound effects, and um, they'll have a featured type of music. Now they got classical here today. They've got some of their new uh, kind of trending ones, I guess, or new ones have been developed. If you want to go download, all you have to do is download these. And what is really cool is when you download these, they're all in tracks. In other words, it might be a seven or eight track. They might have bass, drums, guitars, keyboards, strings, uh, various different kinds of percussion, ethnic percussion, whatever else. And, um, and, and they're all in separated tracks. So you can use what you want to use from the track or you know, you just use like one. Like sometimes I'll just like a piano from one of their of their. You, know, you have these categories. Let's go ahead and show you this. Now, not only just music, you got sound effects too. That's what the SFX is up here. But uh, here you can pick by mood, you can pick by style, you can pick by instrument that you like. Let's say I'm looking for a piano piece, and I might go here and click on this, and then I'll look for piano. So I can find a piano in here somewhere, or orchestral or piano. There we go. So let's click on this, and then I can start sampling the the bits here. And I don't know, Colors of Life, I've never heard of this. And they have different versions, sometimes of the same song. Never get enough. Let's see what this sounds like. Some of them I don't like, some of them I do. Some of them you listen to and you say, okay, I, I like it, except that synthesizer's driving me nuts, and you just get rid of them. With the, let's see how this one sounds. And there'll be a guy that butts in here and says, Digital Digital Juice. Layered music. Digital juice layered music, right? He's there so you can't just go steal this. So let's say, I, I, yeah, I kind of dig that. I'll go download that. And it'll show that it's going to come down in WAV format. And it'll be a multi-track WAV format. And down over here, I can see where it's downloading it. And I've got, I've got pretty high-speed internet here. So you can see you can, you can can see what my internet speed download is, or at least compared to their server. i got really great download speed here. But there we go. So it's only going to take, you know, less than a minute for me to get, probably about a minute for me to get this whole piece of music. And, and so what happens, I'll go ahead and let this come down. But what happens, I'll open up Premiere. And I like to just go ahead and, and bring a piece of music that I like in with all the tracks there. I don't mix it. Sometimes I mix it down in Audition. I used to do that. I do Audition mixes. But anymore, I just get in a hurry. And so here's kind of how I will operate. Now you could... You could bring these up in a nonlinear editor, or not long, well, any nonlinear editor. You could bring it up in a, a sound editor. Uh, what am I trying to say? A DAW, a digital audio workstation, or whatever, or workshop, or software like that. And usually it's Audition or it's uh, Apple Logic that I used to do that. But I, more than anything, now I just go to, I'm going to segue over here to Premiere. And like here's a piece of 720p video I just brought it in to use as an example. This is my Rodeus, Lake Rodeus video that I shot and shared earlier today, but I've taken all the soundtrack off just to show you how this works. So let's say that I'm, I'm gonna bring some into this music folder here. I double clicked, I made a music folder, just did a new new folder, new bin, whatever you call it here, and made a music folder. 
and I called it music. Now the thing I've not done yet is I've not gone over here and and un uh, uncompressed the video that I, or the audio that I just downloaded the music. So I'm gonna you can't see this I'm off screen a little bit here, but I'm gonna go to my Finder. Uh, I'm the wrong thing here. I'm gonna go to my Finder. I'm gonna go to Downloads, Downloads, and here I'm gonna say like uh, we just we're just listening to that one. Let's try this Nevada though. I kind of like that. So I'm gonna unzip it. There it is. Okay. Now I've got a folder where I keep all these things. It's on my, it's on another, let's go to file new finder window. File new finder window. And I'm gonna go to my Extreme 500 disc and I have digital juice downloads and then I have music, layered music. And so I, you can see where I've downloaded various ones here lately that I liked. I'm gonna pull this Nevada on over into here because I'm gonna kind of just minimize that for a minute. So now I have Nevada, here it is, La Nevada version A full. And so I've got all, these are, these are, it's got a cello, drums, electric bass. So I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? It's got seven instruments in it. It's even got a viola in it. So let's, let's go over here. Now I'm gonna import all those. I just, I'm just gonna click, left click double two times there. And I'm gonna go bring that in. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go to digital juice, downloads. And I'm gonna to go to layered music, go to La Nevada. I'm gonna do this and import. And there are all those files. Now they're all synchronized, even if even if they don't start to later in. Like this guitar might not come in till the the 20, 24th bar or something, but it's blank music until then, so it's spacer. So if I bring them all in, they're gonna fit and they're gonna work. And then they're gonna stay in sync, which is kind of cool. I'm gonna close this for now, just for a minute. And it's, I know that I've got like one, two, three stereo files here. Then I got these 5.1 files. I like to just put a bunch of tracks after audio three. This is a stereo track. This is stereo track TC, audio two, audio three. And for some reason, Premiere always makes these 5.1 tracks. I don't want that. I'm gonna say sequence. I'm gonna say add tracks and I'm gonna add seven tracks. I'm gonna put a zero over here. I don't wanna add any video tracks, but I do want to add seven audio tracks after audio three I say okay boom now I got a whole bunch of stereo audio tracks I'm gonna pull this up a little bit so we can see all the tracks and there we go okay great so I'm gonna go here and just pull these in one one after the other here's the cello and now if I were to go and group pull these in it puts them in one after the other so there may be a better way to do this I'm just individually doing this now <laughs> It doesn't matter really. I mean, I, there may be some, I say some quick way to pull them all in on separate tracks, uh, some shortcut and somebody can share that if they want to be a, be a big know-it-all and do that. And that's totally cool with me. So now I've got this audio that I can look at and I can't remember, like I said, if, if I do, if I pull them down in, in order like this, I don't have to name them. I know that this is cello. I know that this is drums. Cause see, I've got cello drums. I brought them in in that specific order. I know that this one is bass. Now if I want to go here and title these, I actually, I think can title them. But I just know, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see here that it looks like it comes in with what, the guitar first. Let's go ahead and play this and see what happens. Now, so I've got another guitar that comes in interesting what was that other guitar was this mute this is a solo this track that's what that must be it no that's the bass okay i'm sorry so where is this other guitar that's so that's not it so is this it more percussion so maybe that is the guitar right here let's just go ahead and do this again yep so you can see here, I might decide I just want to keep this guitar going for a long time. Now I might decide I want bass to come in right here. All right, so I am going to, I, this is just typically how I might work. I'm gonna go ahead and mute, mute, mute. I'm gonna mute all these. Uh, and let's see, the bass was on the third track. So the bass is right here. So I might decide I want the bass to come in right here. 
Now I'm going to unmute that, and so all I've got is this. Uh oh, I got my solo on. My bad. Here we go. Now it's what? Now it's trying. Now, you know, maybe what I want to is so maybe right here, see? And maybe I'd like for this percussion to come in here at this point. Like this. So let's try this now. Maybe I want this, whatever this is. Looks like it's strings of some sort to fade in. Now the thing I might do, and I can open this up in a mixer, but it looks like it's pretty loud. I'm gonna go ahead and right now right click on it. And I, off screen you can't see it, but there's an audio gain down here on the bottom. I'm, I'm just using part of the screen to record here. I'm gonna bring this down probably minus six decibels. And then what I might do here, I might just zoom in on that area and right click on that and say, apply default transition. Again, it was off the screen. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm not recording all the screen, but what that is, that's like a crossfade. So I just I just added that as a constant power. I'm gonna let, it, let this fade in. So here's some strings gonna come in a little softer uh, a bit of, bit of sound here. So here's what we got now. See, that's kind of how I edit. Uh, there may be ways that people, it's just me, you know, maybe better ways. Now, what I might do is say, okay, that's as much of that as I need. I'm going to leave all these tracks here, even if, even if I didn't use them. I might use them for something else later. So I'm going to drag over all these. I'm going to go up here under sequence. And I'm going to say, da 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 da, where is it? Apply audio transition. And there it put my constant power at the end. Did it put constant power at the beginning? I think it did on all of those. And it doesn't bother me. It doesn't, I don't mind that they all fade in a little bit. It's not going to cause a problem. But what I can do here, I think I can take that, you know, I have to do each of these constant powers. And these are, these are fade outs, right? And it's going to fade out the audio at the end. That's what constant power does. It either blends two pieces of audio together or it fades them out at the end. So I'm gonna pull it back like that, like for it to fade out roughly like that. So now what I've got, let's just watch a little of it and see how it does, right? It's, just, it's a little bit of a... go folks that's how I do it and <laughs> then I just do my export I click down here make sure I have this all I say file and export media and then I choose my parameters that I want to export at uh, which typically are H264 
you know, this is 720p and I just choose my various different things where I usually render out maximum depth and maximum render quality and export my file and then up it straight to YouTube. I do usually go here and decide, you know, how much uh, data I want to give it. 720, for, uh, for 720p video, that's probably pretty good. For 1080p, I usually do 16 or 18 to 20, 22, something like that, megs per second. Hopefully that helps, folks. That's as simple as it is. Uh, if I've left anything out, I may not have explained it as well as I could have, but uh, send me a message, send me a question if you want to. Uh, share some information about how you do your uh, audio. But I will say this, Digital Juice is quite worth having. Uh, if you're a, pro a professional, if you want to take your stuff to the next level, there are just, like I say, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of, of royalty-free stuff that you can use, whether it's music, whether it's, say, wipes. Uh, these things are awesome. Uh, you've got, and you, you, just have to, you just have to see what all's in here. You have to go here and mess around. And you can, of course, go to... Uh, Digital Juice, and you can look at all these various things. Just go there. I mean, oh, it's just incredible. I, and, and, and I use them all the time at work. I use some of their mats, and I use all their transitions. And they're just, you get to go to these stores. They're just different stores that you have here. If you're a motion designer, it's a whole different set of stuff that you'll have. Um, you know, here you have After Effects projects, stuff for Final Cut Pro. Uh, so there's, there are templates and stuff in here for Premiere and all as well. So it, it's, it's quite worth it. There's all kinds of actual photos and stuff that you might want to use, backgrounds. Uh, it's, it's sort of a, it's not really a secret. I see their stuff on broadcast all the time. You'll, you'll, I watch Channel 3 News and they use a lot of digital juice backgrounds and all kinds of different stuff. I mean, I'm just scratching the surface of what all's here. So there you go, folks. Uh, go to Digital Juice, check it out. But that's how I do my audio and pull in my, um, my, and mix my music. Unless it's music that I've made myself, and sometimes I have that too. I have my own music that's in, that I keep set, broken down into tracks so I can pull that stuff in as well. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like.